Can we open our Bibles if we may? In the book of Acts, Ditiro. We're going to read in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, chapter 1. Is Enzo chapter 1. Ditiro Java Apostle. Carlo Giamatomo. Let us start reading there in verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, when they have come together, they ask him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you have saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Judas the son of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days, Pista stood up in the midst of the disciples altogether the number of names was about a hundred and twenty and said men and brethren this scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Let us read verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate and let no one live in it and let another take his office. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. And Lord God Almighty, reveal it unto us and teach us your word today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have read from up there from verse 5 so that we can have the background of what we are to talk about today. 
So the message title of today is Someone will take your place. Or rather let me say you will be replaced. Somebody will take your place. Hallelujah. Where we have read the word of the Lord is speaking about Judas of which he was one of the disciples of Jesus. He was also called with others when they were called to come into the ministry of Jesus. He was one of the people who was always walking with Jesus. And he was one of the people who was always holding the finances of the ministry of Jesus. Okay, where we have read, we are just finding the background of saying, after Jesus has left, they went up to Galilee and they went into the room as they were told and they sat inside. I believe they wanted to pray because now the Savior or the Lord was gone. But what I want us to look at closely here is one of the disciples of Jesus was no longer there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you still here? Okay, now the Bible says, when they were assembled together or when they were seated together or when they were in the room together, Peter stood up in their midst and said to them, the scripture has to be fulfilled because it was spoken in the book of Psalms that somebody must take his place. In other words, they were saying, Judas was one of us. In everything that we were doing, he was there. So it means from today, because he is no longer there, we will see the gap of his absence. We will see that there is somebody who is needed in his place so that Mutomo, where we can be called the village, we are complete. Why? Because when Jesus called them, even him, he was also called. To come into the ministry. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says. Judas was also in the ministry of Jesus. Come on German. In other words. There was something he was also doing. Like what I'm trying to explain. Judas was the one who was holding the finances of the ministry. That is why you will hear all the time Judas is Iscariot when he sees somebody playing around with money. He will say that this money was supposed to be given so that we can do one, two, three. Because I believe he was speaking because it was one of his responsibilities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says... When Peter stood up there to tell them about they have to choose, they chose two people and drew lots. When they drew lots, Matthew or Matthias was the one who was chosen to come and take the place of Judas. So now, the thing that I want us to look most at is not the person who took the place of Judas. It's why somebody was supposed to take the place of Judas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says Judas was numbered with them. When we speak about the apostles, we also include Judas. When we speak about people who are saved, we also mention you. That you are also one of us. Okay? Now, when you come to the house of the Lord each and every day, there is something that the Lord has assigned you to do. 
there is something merekonyana omudima o feeling god has given something you something that you have to do in this house every day when you come to the house of the lord maybe one of the things that you have to do as a child of god is to dance for him hmm maybe one of the things that you have to do is just to scream and shout like a crazy person maybe something else that you have to do is just to stand up and lift up into heaven raise your hands and praise and worship him each and every person that was in the ministry of jesus had something specific that that person had to do okay now as we look at us as children of god today even us because we are in the house of the lord the children of god we have something to do hallelujah can you tell the person that is close to you there is something that you have to do when you are born again by the blood and the spirit of the lord when you are called a child of the most high god there is something that the spirit of the lord imparts in you that which you are supposed to do each and every day of your life in other words it means when you come to the house of the lord there is something that you have to do when you reach the house of the lord hallelujah hallelujah can you tell the person that is close to you you are part of the ministry already the spirit of the lord has already told you what is it that you have to do because you are part of the ministry some of us we are here just to dance for the lord one like me i am here just to shout and scream for the lord maybe you are here just to ululate for the lord or maybe you are here just to bow down before him and worship but there is something that god has laid in your heart or put in your soul and your spirit that which you have to do all the time when you go to the house of the lord or every day when you are living on earth why because you are already part of us can you tell the person that is close to you you are part of us now because you are part of us you have something to do The other thing that you might do also is to come tomorrow on Monday and come and scrub the floor of the church. Somebody has to do it. Or rather somebody has to come and sweep the floor. Somebody has to come and dust the chairs. Somebody has to come and do 1 2 3 4. Why? Because when we are all in the house of the Lord like this, there is something that the spirit of the Lord has mandated you to do when you go into the house of the Lord. Now the Bible says unto us when we read the the story of Judas ntratu ubaba he was always holding the money of the ministry like what i've said now if we can read there in the book of john chapter 12 verse 1 to 6 you will hear the bible saying this he speak not that He cared for the poor. A lady called Mary Magdalene came and Mary came and wiped Jesus with a very precious oil and wiped with the feet with his own hair. In the background there we hear here brother Judas worrying. Say, "Mm, this perfume is very precious. The smell it's so good." if we might have taken this and sell it we were supposed to get some money now when we are reading right now the bible is saying he was not speaking it because he care for the poor he love poor people he love to serve other people the bible says he was speaking these words because he was a thief hmm This man, Banababomma, 
each and every day murutuaka he was going around with jesus christ of nazareth the miracle worker the anointed one of god but still he was stealing lo baba be a tsonja no mai hamba no jesus In other words, this is coming to us so that we can learn. Manaba papa we children of my father. You can be very much anointed, but if you are not faithful in your calling, how in the you are going nowhere. And somebody can then ask me, mama, why do you say calling? Most of us la etari city na ekaya. When we say calling we speak about being a pastor. When we say calling we speak about being apostle. When we say calling we speak about being an evangelist, being a teacher, being a prophet. I prophesy. Let me tell you what the eh wanabomma let me tell you a secret today. You can be a servant of the Lord serving only by sweeping the floor in the church being faithful in doing that each and every day you are better than a prophet why do i say so it was not going to be very much important for peter to say let us find a person that is going to take the place of judas why judas was a thief hmm Now these people learned that they couldn't do anything anymore because the place of Judas is is empty. Things are not going the right way right now because you are lazy in your post. Can you tell the person that is close to you you are lazy? That's why is in those to sing a hambi gahle. We were supposed to be having people that are taking care of the house of the Lord. We are also supposed to be having people that are saying na each and every day I will wake up in the morning and go there and scrub the house of the Lord and do 1 2 3 4. 4. I don't need anything the person who's going to reward me is God in heaven. All that I'm doing I'm doing it for the glory of the name of the Lord. So now Judas was one of these people because he loved money more than his calling. He lost the calling of God. Can I repeat it again? Because Judas is carried our brother loved money more than his calling. His calling was to hold the money that has been offered. Hmm? When there is a need he will be told to take the money go and buy this go and do this go buy food go do this go do that Now Judas Iscariot failed in that category on being faithful When we come to holding the finances of the ministry of Jesus This thing led our brother to even sell his own master Judas went on he didn't see the importance of having master Jesus with him always you know money blinded him to an extent that even when people were saying no we just want to catch him so that we if they wanted to catch him so that they can just talk to him or maybe set a record straight or maybe speak about what he was teaching about Why did they have to pay him to do the job? Now his problem was he was blinded by the love of money. That is why he couldn't realize that these people are robbing me. Na rata chele tenta dola. Hmm? And the Bible says he agreed to take the money. and he came and kissed Jesus hugged him so that people can know why because the bible says these people looked alike because they were all just they spoke even the same 
you can differentiate the one from the other so for them so for them to be able to catch jesus there must be somebody who is working and walking with them who can come and say this is the one judas agreed to take money in the place of walking with the lord hallelujah now peter here is saying yes he was in our midst doing whatever he was doing because he was called also with us now our brother is gone let us fulfill the scripture can you tell somebody that is close to you fulfillment of the scripture let us fulfill the scripture the scripture when we are going to fulfill the scripture we do it this way let us make lots and we choose one and the bible says matthias was chosen and matthias took his place i have titled the message of today you will be replaced because i want our eyes to be opened children of god calling in the house of the lord does not mean that you prophesy does not mean that you stand in front of people like me and shout and scream you can serve under your calling when you are doing that little thing you are doing in the house of the father now when you fail can you tell the person that is close to you when you fail you will be replaced asimo apostle fella is not apostle only who become replaced even you when you fail to do the word of the lord you are replaced if god has spoken to your heart today i'm giving an example brother mike and god said to you after working the whole of this month take your salary to the house of the lord and give it i have learned through the spirit of the lord if you don't bring that money to the house of the lord god passes you and come and touch the second person you become replaced why because god has a reason of why he told you to go and give that amount of money in his house so many of us we are being passed by the opportunity that god is giving unto us looking at the high valued callings what we can start with today let us start by doing the little so that god can take us to the next level hallelujah now judas iscariot was replaced can i ask you a question Are you not replaced? Hmm? Now many of us in Abapoloswa, we Christians, we have now changed to be thieves in the house of the Lord. Some of others we are not thieves. Thieves are those who steal. we are crooks some of us we are just lazy and with someone am can you ask the person that is close to you are you not lazy and what is the answer hallelujah in other words i am trying to tell you when you are not doing the will of the father no matter how small no matter how big no matter how huge no matter how large the issue that is true and to the calling that god has called you with is for you to do that which god has called you for god god has called us for different departments as the day i was speaking with the mothers i was telling them Jesus had women that were always with him and they always made good and expensive clothes for him. It was their calling. Hmm? It was what? It was their own calling. 
Now each and every day they have to make sure that Muruti Wabo and their pastor looks good. It was their calling. Now Tina, us, we are here in the house of the Lord. We are counted in the number of the people that are found in Charis Missionary Church. Now when we are here, there are jobs calling, I will call them job calling, that God has given unto each and every one of us. My calling is not the same as your calling. And now when you try to exercise, do what God has told you, it costs you something. Hmm? It costs you something. And this something that is needed, God knows that you are able to provide for it. God can never give you a responsibility that is above your power or above your head. Every responsibility that God gives you, he knows that you can handle it. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now all of us here, we've got responsibilities. Can you ask the person that is close to you, what is your responsibility? What is it that you are doing in the house of the Lord? When you come to the house of the Lord, when we say dance, you don't dance. When we say scream, you don't scream. When we say ululate, it's difficult. When we say jam, unkosiam. There is nothing that you can do. When we say, come now, let's give, you cannot give. So now I want us to come back to our senses and we say, God, can you take away the replacement? I want to come back to my own calling. Because many of us, we are playing church. It was better for Judas because he died. He saw his sin and hanged himself. Now, Nalili, now me and you, we are still in the house of the Lord and we have been replaced already. That is why you will see when we do our things, they don't matter. They are not visible. Oh God, God, since you've been praying, Karabashanda, you are still Karabashandaring even today. We are not seeing you going, growing in spirit. Why? Because rejection has taken over already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you not replaced, sister, brother, whomever? Have you not been replaced already? Now, in the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 23 to 26, the Bible says, you will read it, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works, my works until the end, to him I will give power over nations. The Bible says, hold fast what you have. The job that you are having. If you are sweeping, sweep like a crazy lady. If you are scrubbing the floor, scrub it like you are crazy. When they say, can't you stop for just a while so that you can say, no, I haven't finished the job that I was called for. The Bible is those that work until I come. Can I repeat it? Eh? It says, behold, but hold fast what you have till I come. Hold on what you are doing until I come. And he said, and he who overcomes. 
He who does what? He who does what? It means in these callings, I say I will name them callings, isn't it? In these callings that God has given us, there are temptations. There is trouble. So if you can overcome those troubles and those temptations, when I come, Hmm? The Bible here didn't mention I am speaking about the shepherds or the leaders of the church. He said to everyone that will overcome when he or she is doing the work that has been given unto him or her. I'm going to give the person power over nations. No wonder when we do things we don't go anywhere. No wonder when we try businesses they don't have breakthrough. No wonder when we try to start things, they don't go anywhere. It is because we have been taken away already. We don't have an, even got a slight piece of power. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you not rejected? Rejected, it means your place has been taken already. Now, this Bible is showing us good Lobaba, Uchutas. He was already on the top level of doing whatever he was doing. That is why when money comes out, he will worry. And this man even knew how to dribble the money. Because when it is said in the word of God, it is because it was already noticed that Uchutas is stealing. Hmm? This man was stealing. That is why he has graduated to the next level of even selling his own master. Now me and you, we are here in the house of the Lord today. The biggest question that I have for you today is what is the calling that God has given unto you for the house of the Lord because you are here. If you are here, there is something you have to do. Hi, you don't have just to come and sit on top of that chair. And at the end of the day, you go back home. You wait for the hand of mama to pray for you. And the, eh, eh, no, there is something that you have to do in the house of the Lord. And that something is still waiting for you. And if you take long, you don't do that which the Spirit of the Lord is telling you. I am telling you today, the Spirit of the Lord is going to replace you. Can you tell somebody that is close to you? You will be replaced. This is a time of being replaced. Somebody is going to be replaced. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, be careful. Be careful, oh. You will be replaced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in the book of Luke chapter 10. If we may go to Luke chapter 10. I am also going to give you examples of people that were rejected because of not doing the commandments of the Lord. And somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the person that is close to you, are you still inside or you are already outside? Can we read it? Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Can somebody say hallelujah? 
The Bible here is explaining to us since the beginning. God has been using prophets. God has been using his servants, different servants, in different ways. Others will lead us. Others will prophesy the things that we are seeing today. And the Bible is saying many, they have cried and they were longing to see what we are seeing today. What is it that we are seeing today? To be moved by the power of the spirit of the Lord. To be directed by the spirit of the Lord. To work under the anointing of the most high God. And they even departed not having seen what we are seeing today. We are living in a moment that is very much blessed. We are seeing the spirit of the Lord working in our lives. We are seeing the spirit of the Lord directing us each and every day. Now the problem with us is there are so, so many commandments that has been written in the Bible or anywhere where God is telling us that we have to do this. We have to, don't have to do that. We don't have to do this. We have to do this. But all of these things that the spirit of the Lord is narrating to us, we don't do them. But yet we claim to be living in the spiritual world. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you doing what God has told you to do? I have already explained to you the works that we have to do in the house of the Lord are so many. You can never say I don't have anything to do. You are lying. There is a lot of things you can do in the house of the Lord. And now because we are living in the time of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit take these things and lay them in our hearts so that we can go out and do that which the Spirit of the Lord wants us to do. Now in these little things, small, small things that the Spirit of the Lord tells us to do, Mama, stand up and scream and shout, wow. How will people look at me when I shout? You have already failed. Oh. Those people you are afraid of will never go with you when you are told you have failed. When you are told or when it is proclaimed to you that you have failed or you are rejected, they are the ones who will say, she was making herself better like she's a very, very a good Christian. Always, when we start praying, she's the one speaking in tongues. Always when she prays, she's the one who will be the last to finish her prayer. But now she has been rejected. Why? Because the person left to do or live to do whatever that Christ has told the person to do in his house. What is it that you are doing in the house of the Lord? All of us here, we have been called to do something. Those ones that are up there are for those that are up there. But let us start down there so that God can lift us to go up there. You must start somewhere. Look at Peter. They were just following Jesus when Jesus was doing miracles. At the end of the day when Jesus left, they were the ones that were called the apostles. Why? Because they've seen it all. Are you hearing me? You can never be an apostle when you haven't seen it all. Are you hearing me? You can never be a good teacher of the word when you haven't seen it all. You must start down there. Be faithful in your calling. Do what God has called you for. Don't mind what people are saying about you. Don't mind what people are doing. Just do whatever the spirit of the Lord has told you. And as you are doing it each and every day, the spirit of the Lord is elevating you bit by bit, small by small. And one day for sure, you are going to reach where God wants you to reach. 
thinking that the problem is we want to stop up. Start up there. We don't start up, we start down. Every foundation is down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you not rejected? My sister. Are you not rejected already? Have you not been taken out already? Hallelujah. Now in the book of John chapter 9. Johanna 9. Verse 4. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is good to you? Fight so that you don't become rejected. In the book of John chapter 9. Verse 4. The Bible says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can wake. Can I repeat it? I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can wake. Right now we are in the house of the Lord. We've got all the opportunities to do what the spirit of the Lord is commanding us to do. Let us work when it is still day. Because tough times are coming where we won't be able to work anymore. Here the Bible, wherever I'm reading it, speaking about working, 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 doing what God has told us, following the commandments of the Lord, following what the Bible says, following the teachings of Jesus, doing whatever that Jesus has commanded us to do. Work. Let us work when it is still day. Night is coming. When night falls, we won't be able to work anymore. Gauri, it will be dark. So when night falls, let it be our time to rest. Not our time to recognize and realize that we were supposed to be waking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you must start waking today. You must start doing something today. There is no more time to waste for us. If it is a time to give, stand up like a mad person and go and give. It is your chance to offer your tithes. Stand up and do it because the word of the Lord said so. If it is time to give an offering of whatever, do it like you want to do it. Why? Because you have given an opportunity to do so. The only thing that we cry for, we children of God, is to do the things that people will notice and see. We want to do things that people will recognize and clap hands for us. We want to do things that the next person, when he she looks at us, will say, indeed you have done it. Now the time of doing so is no more, it's over. This is the time of us to stand up on our feet and do the will of the Father like we have never started before. And do what God has commanded us to do like we have never started before. Because if we do not do so, the Bible said we will be rejected. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example like what I said. About somebody who was rejected early. Some called him a lie. In the book of Samuel, chapter 3, starting from verse 2, chapter 2, they're coming to 3. But you can just check verse 10 to 14 in chapter 3. The Bible says, Eli was having sons. Eli was a priest 
God always relates or speaks with him. Now his children started to misbehave in the house of the Lord. Started to do things they were not supposed to do in the house of the Lord. And because the Lord is faithful and gracious, came to him and say, Eli, can you speak with your children? Tell them not to do what they are doing. Because in my sight, it is not good. Now for Eli to do what he was told to go and tell the, the children that what you are doing is wrong, he just let them be. And they went on and went on and went on doing whatever they were doing until God rejected Eli and chose somebody else. Now this is the painful part of it. When Eli was rejected by God, God allowed Eli to teach somebody who was going to take his place. Are you hearing me? A young boy came to stay with him, clean the house of the Lord, do everything, open uh, windows, open doors, you know, dust, do everything. And Eli was watching, looking at what the boy was doing. Eli didn't know the secret that this boy was going to eliminate him. The boy grew and grew until one day God saw so that it was time for him to start speaking with Samuel. During the night when Samuel was sleeping, God came and called him Samuel, Samuel. Samuel woke up, ran to the master, the priest. You called me. He said, no, I didn't call you. And he went back again. God came again, Samuel, Samuel. He woke up, ran again. You called me. No, I didn't call you. Okay, now when this person comes to call you again, you answer and say, speak my Lord. I am listening. The same person came again to Samuel and called Samuel, Samuel. Now Samuel was now educated. He was being educated by the person who is going to take the place. And then he said, Master, speak, Lord, speak, I am listening. And the Lord started to speak with the boy somewhere. I have seen all the wrongs that the children of Eli are doing. And then now reached my face. Now, I am going to wipe off the entire generation of Eli. Wipe off. In other words, when God wiped off, rejected this family, God is supposed to put somebody again in the place of these rejected ones. Who's the next person to be placed? It's Samuel who was always there closer to learn all the things. Can somebody say hallelujah? When I began, I say you cannot be on top there when you don't know the things down here. You start down here, then you go up there. So Samuel was the right candidate for the calling, but why? Because he was seeing everything always in the house of the Lord. The Bible says he will wake up in the morning, clean the house of the Lord, open windows, open doors, and when offerings are given, he is right there looking, watching, studying and learning each and everything that is being done until the time where God placed him in the right place. Why? Because he was there for the calling. Can you say amen? amen? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you there for the calling? Whatever that God is telling you to do today, are you doing it? If we haven't started doing it, it might mean that we have been rejected already. The same day the sons died, the same day Eli died. 
and it was over. Hallelujah. Whoever that does not do the commandments of the Father God, God has a right to reject and replace. If God rejects you, there is no more medicine for you. You must be replaced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you not yet already replaced? Are you not replaced already? We are in the house of the Lord, but we couldn't do now the things that we are supposed to do. Maybe it is because we don't have that power. That is given to the people that are doing what God wants them to do. We don't have the strength. Because we never started even in the beginning. Hallelujah. Can we start from today to do what God has placed in our heart to do? Look at Saul. The king of Israel. Say in the book of First Samuel. I believe it's in chapter 13. One day, he was out with the people. And Samuel was then a prophet, elevated from a cleaner to a prophet. And Samuel said to him, wait for me, I am coming to make offerings, burnt offerings to the Lord. Now saw the king, when he sees that Samuel was not coming, Mm? he went up he called the people gathered them together they didn't wait anymore and he started giving offerings to the Lord burning offerings to the Lord doing things that he was not supposed to do and when Samuel came to him he said unto him Saul what is it that you have done and he answered and said, I saw people were becoming tired. And then I called them and I did offerings. And Samuel said unto Saul, God was about to give you also the whole kingdom of Israel. Because now of what you have done today, God will never do it to you again. Why? Because he did something he was never supposed to do. When God says unto you, wake up and pray. Mm -mm. You want you to do one, two, three because you saw somebody doing one, two, three. When God says unto you, jump and do this and this and this. No, you don't want to do it this way because you saw others doing it this way. When God says, I have placed you in this place to be in dominion or to rule over these people in this place, you want to take over the next place also. Why? Because you have a desire of being recognized. Can somebody say amen? amen. Many of us, we are rejected today because the cry that we are having is recognition. We don't want to do things that people are not seeing. I make a joke when I started here. I said, if I can say right now, jump, you will say, mm -mm. I say scream, you will say no. I say shout, you will say no. And then I will call and say, oh yeah, come, prophesy. Are you going to do it? Because you don't even want to do the small, small ones. Hmm? Where do you want to begin? You have to start somewhere. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? You must start somewhere. You must have a starting point. And when you have a starting point, God will allow you to grow. And when you are growing, God will allow you to reach where you are supposed to reach. One day God again told Saul. I believe it's in chapter 16. Saul, go to the Amalekites and destroy them utterly. 
Don't even leave woman, child, anything, suckling children. Kill all of them. And Saul went. I believe when Saul reached there, you know, he saw beautiful things. Hmm? Nice things. I said, no. God made a mistake here. You know, these ones are not supposed to be killed. You know, these ones, we are going to take them back home. And when we reach there, we are going to tell the Lord we are here to make an offering unto him. Why? Because these ones, they are good now. We cannot kill them. And he took them. He also took the king back home. When he was on this way, the same prophet saw Samuel came to him. Saul, what is it you have done? I, I kept Sama aside because I was doing it for the... God does not want your help. Are you hearing me? When God says this, you follow. You don't have to help him. You must do whatever he is saying. God is not interested in bent offerings. He's interested in somebody that hears what he says and do it. Are you hearing me? God is not interested in our offerings. God is looking at our hearts if we are following what the word is telling us each and every day. Now, if we can be eligible to follow what the Bible, the word of the Lord is telling us, then we will be able to offer offerings and do gifts. Hallelujah. Now, when Saul reached at home, the Lord said to Samuel, the prophet, I, I regret why I made Saul king. Over my people. Do you know why? Because this soul does not even recognize his state where God placed him. He even disobeys God even when God is telling him things. And God says from today I have rejected him. From there King Saul start to be crazy. The same person who was supposed to take over his government came and beat a harp for him so that craziness can leave him. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. When King Saul was crazy, David was playing the guitar. And when David was playing the guitar, Chipengo, the craziness of King Saul will go down. When David was playing the guitar there, he was learning the pros and things of the kingdom, how it is run, how things are done. After that, God anoints David to be king instead of Saul. Are you hearing me? God has a right of rejecting you if you are not doing what he has called you for. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you? Are you still here or you have been rejected already? How many commandments have you jumped? How many things you didn't do? Because of many other reasons. How many lies you told? Because you wanted to be recognized. How many things you stole? Because you wanted to look better. How many things you have tried? Because you wanted to be counted with many that are going up. Let me tell you, children of God, if we don't do the commandments of God, God has a right to replace us. I don't know if we are still in or we are already out. But I am praying today to the Spirit of the Lord. It is better for us to come back inside so that God can start using us again. And we go on doing the will of the Father according to the word of the Lord. According to the commandments of the Lord. So that we can be counted worthy of the kingdom of the Father. So that when he comes, we will be given power to rule over nations but if we are not inside and we are already outside we are wasting our time hallelujah hallelujah 
Can you ask the person again, are you in? Oh. You are outside. It's so long the spirit of the Lord has been speaking to you time and again. Do this. Do this. I cannot do this, Father. Because I have seen Tendo doing it this way. But God said unto you, you jump. And that one bow. That one stand. That one walk. Now because you saw others walking, you want to walk also. Because you saw others jumping, you want to jump also. What is it that the Lord has told you to do? Are you following the commandments of the Lord? Are you doing what the Spirit of the Lord has told you? If you are doing it, God is going to elevate you. If you are doing it, God is going to lift you up. If you are doing it, God is going to take you to the higher level. If you are doing it, you will never lack anything all the days of your life. I don't know if you are hearing me. We are living in a time when we are, where we are compromising too much. We do things because everything we do, there is a reason in the side. I because. I walk because. What is it that the word of the Lord is saying about your walk? What is it that the word of the Lord is saying about your eating? What is it that the Lord is saying about your coming into the house of the Lord? That is why the Bible said, the Bible says, the God says, sometimes when he looked at the offering that we are offering to him, he turned his face. Why? Because unto him is dead. Abomination. Things that has been rejected. But why? Because we have failed from the beginning. Hallelujah. I believe today this is our day to go back to the altar of the Lord. And say, Father, from today, I want to do your commandments no matter what. I don't care what people will say. I don't care what people will do. I don't care how people do their own things. I am going to do the things according to the way that you tell me. When you tell me go, I will go. When you tell me sit, I will sit, Lord. When you tell me pray, I will pray. When you tell me do this, I will do. I won't care what other people are saying. Why? Because I want to count be counted as one that is inside with others.